15-year-old Britta Mateos resided in Siegburg Kaldauen in the North Rhine-Westphalia region of Germany with her parents Helga and Manfred alongside her younger sister who was three years her junior. Britta was enrolled at Siegburg Secondary School and on the 23rd of February 1984, as Britta was making her way back from secondary school, she opted for a commonly used shortcut through the Hoofwald, known in English as the Hoof Forest. It was during this journey that she mysteriously disappeared without a trace. Understandably, Britta's parents were consumed with worry when she failed to return home. Her unexpected absence without any prior notice deeply troubled them. Before delving into today's case, we'd like to give a massive thank you to today's sponsor, MyHeritage. Family history is incredibly important. Without them, none of us would be here. Many of us wonder where we came from and what our ancestors did to get by, and My Heritage can help you with that by making your own family tree. There are over 19 billion historical records across the site from around the world. Various documents, including censuses, birth and death certificates, and even travel documentation, showing where your relatives went. One very useful feature on My Heritage is Instant Discoveries, which helps you complete an entire branch of your family tree by a single click, adding even more relatives to your family tree without adding them all individually. It's a great feature and it saves a lot of time. Through researching my own family tree on my heritage, going back through my paternal Campbell and Macdonald lines, we discovered through census records that my two times great grandfather, Donald Macdonald, lived on the remote Isle of Rum in Scotland. The census revealed that he lived with his father, Alexander, a shepherd, his mother, Catherine, and seven siblings. They all lived in a bothy called Girdle, which remains on the island today. Island life would have been tough, with the McDonald's and the 50 other residents only getting supplies delivered to the island monthly from the mainland. We found an incredible photo from around 1900 of Donald and his family, but it was a little blurred, so we used MyHeritage's photo enhancing tool and it gave the picture much more clarity and it looks a lot sharper. This tool doesn't just improve the quality of the image of your ancestors, but you can colorize it as well. It's a feature I've used a lot already. You can even animate your photos and bring them to life. Through using my heritage, we managed to find a number of new connections and a lot of new information about our ancestors. We look forward to discovering more. Start your own fascinating family tree journey with my heritage today by clicking the link in the description below or by scanning the QR code on screen to start your 14-day free trial right now. Thank you again to my heritage for sponsoring today's video. Just two days following the inexplicable disappearance of the schoolgirl, on February 25th, the body of a young female was discovered by two young boys walking their German shepherd dog in a spruce forest, situated between the cemetery and the district of Haus zur Mühlen, just 400 metres away from the Mateos residence. Britta's remains were discovered nestled in a pit in the ground. Most notably and horrifyingly, her body had suffered severe burns, leaving only a fragment of one leg intact and recognisable. It was speculated that she had been strangled with her own red scarf, a birthday gift from a friend that was given to her on February 4th. On March 8th, less than two weeks after her body was found, Britta Mateos was laid to rest in a nearby cemetery. Her family was left shattered and grief-stricken by their profound loss, grappling with one burning question in particular. Why? Why would someone commit such a barbaric act against a 15-year-old girl? German authorities cordoned off the scene to look for clues, with the help of the homicide squad and forensic investigators. A thorough search through the area, combing through every last inch of forestry, lasted over five hours, involving a 36-man platoon of riot police from Brühl, along with four dog handlers who meticulously combed the surrounding woodland. 
In the ensuing days and weeks, numerous interrogations were conducted, involving family, friends, locals and even students and teachers at the secondary school, which wasn't far from the site. Six weeks later, their efforts led them to the front door of a 23-year-old painter in Ziegberg. The man was arrested and charged in relation to the murder of Britta Mateos. Leading up to and on the day of the crime, he had been working on wallpapering an apartment along the main road in Caldowan, and witnesses reported seeing him in the vicinity of the crime scene on multiple occasions. In 1978, at the age of 17, this male individual had previously been convicted of killing his 13-year-old girlfriend, for which he received a mere five-year juvenile sentence. Initially detained by the magistrate, the suspect was later released in July of 1984 due to what was deemed a, quote, lack of urgent suspicion of a crime even though this case was murder. This decision left Britta's family speechless, especially when the Bond jury court declined to proceed with main proceedings for the same reason, effectively halting the only lead in the case. It wasn't until four years later, spurred by an appeal from the public prosecutor's office, that the higher regional court mandated the opening of the trial at the Bonn Regional Court in 1988. At the trial, the public prosecutor sought to establish the defendant's presence in the forest during the time frame of the crime, on February 23rd, 1984, utilising a time path diagram to establish an exact timeline. However, this evidence couldn't be presented due to missing files. Shockingly, it was later discovered that German authorities had no DNA evidence and had destroyed the evidence exhibits for this case in or around 1991, for reasons unknown. During legal proceedings against the accused, a jogger initially claimed to have seen the defendant around the time of the crime, but upon an on-site visit, their certainty of this seemed to waver. Additionally, two other witnesses placed Britta at a location for which the defendant provided an alibi. Consequently, the validity of the defendant's alibis for the time of the crime became somewhat irrelevant. Moreover, there were no witnesses to the excavation of the pit, where Britta's body was later discovered. Other evidence did not withstand thorough examination at the trial. For instance, traces of Britta's scarf were discovered on the defendant's parka and on her own anorak. However, an expert deemed this as inconclusive evidence, since the scarf was mass-produced at the time. Despite significant circumstantial evidence pointing towards this man as the perpetrator, the defendant consistently denied any involvement in the crime. Ultimately, due to insufficient evidence, he was acquitted of Britta's murder. This decision left her family heartbroken and, understandably, confused and frustrated. Helga, Britta's mother, expressed her shock in the German Express newspaper, quote, During the trial, we had the impression that they were getting more and more on his trail. After a half-hour break, he was suddenly acquitted, out of the blue. The accused's public defender, Wolfgang Redermacher, was convinced that the public prosecutor's office and the police, quote, rushed to exclusively target the painter as the suspect. Redermacher claimed the criminal investigation department of the police force only presented biased evidence, which suited their own narrative, which implicated the accused, omitting any evidence which favoured his own client. He said this left both the prosecution and the court, quote, extremely frustrated. He deemed the entire process a scandal, as the Criminal Investigation Department failed to transmit the evidence file in its entirety to the Public Prosecutor's Office and the court. 
It became evident from this omission that witnesses had encountered Britta following her demise. Following the ultimate acquittal, Radermacher said, quote, The strength of circumstantial evidence relies on its weakest link. He did not believe that his client was responsible and ultimately believed that police were clutching at straws in order to convict someone for Britta's murder, even if the evidence presented was purely circumstantial. The accusation of biased investigations is dismissed by the current Bonn Chief Public Prosecutor Robin Fassbender, who stands by the police and their investigative methods, quote, I see no evidence warranting a different approach at that time. Fassbender was unable to ascertain how the evidence in this case was lost, as the discovery was only made in 2000, during a review of cold cases which were to be put for new DNA analysis. He speculates it might have been an inadvertent oversight, but nonetheless it remains a negligent one, and no one has been held accountable for this unforgivable error. Despite being shelved as a cold case, the investigation is periodically revisited, with fresh sets of eyes scrutinising the files for any potential new leads. In 2014, on the 30th anniversary of his daughter's tragic passing, Britta's father shared with German news outlets the profound impact her death had on his family. Quote, Our lives have never regained normalcy. His wife Helga echoed his sentiments, expressing her heartfelt desire. Quote, I simply want to know who it was. Every day they are haunted by thoughts of their beloved daughter, a presence that never fades from their minds. Forty years have now passed, yet Britta's family still long for justice to be served for their cherished daughter, whose life was tragically cut short. Despite the case reaching a standstill, the statute of limitations in Germany regarding murder does not expire. This means that as long as German authorities continue to investigate the case files, which remains with the public prosecutor's office, there remains a flicker of hope that one day Britta's killer will be held accountable for their actions. But without any evidence left to work with, all exhibits having been destroyed in 1991, tragically it seems impossible that justice will ever prevail for Britta Mateos. Even as DNA and forensic technologies progress through time, there is zero chance of this case ever being solved. Don't forget to click the link in the description below or scan the QR code on screen now to claim your 14-day free trial at MyHeritage and start your family tree today.